Oh, peace and long life. Live long and prosper. All right, I'm going to get into politics a little bit. Just, well, like I said before, this is my channel. I go, go through all sorts of stuff. One of the biggest things I keep hearing since I was a child, even, the same thing. This person is this. He's a misogynist, or he's evil. He's lying. He's doing this. He's doing it. He has a bad temper. He has a bad attitude. He has bad, 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 bad. It's just, that's it. It's all I've ever heard, especially about politics, but preachers and speakers and TV and radio and some athlete somebody doesn't like that might be a great athlete, but no, that's a bad person. You don't like that person. Actually, I do, but not for who they are. It's for what they can do. I mean, please. Well, anyway, and as I got older, yes, then it became more important to me. Oops, I got wires hanging here. I'm checking out while I'm talking to you that it became more important about who the person is, right? <laughs> Jeff Gordon, for one. <laughs> anyway, as time goes on, I started realizing how these people vote, how they talk. And this is since my single-digit early childhood, right? Well, one of the funny things about all of this is simply that the only thing I have ever heard, specifically, and I'm only a two-gender guy, male and female, and because they're different, they have different thought processes. Women are emotional, and they freak out over the darndest things. There's one place I was talking to my cousin about something with Trump, and looked at me square in the face, be quiet. I said, why? I said, because my wife and my daughter don't want to hear that crap. Trump's a sexist, misogynist, money-hungry pig. Yeah? What's the point? I said, in... In D.C., he's an improvement. Almost 100%. And we're sitting there, three of us laughing, saying, You're right, but don't tell them that. You might get killed. <laughs> I said, That could be fun. <laughs> really? You want to try and kill me? <laughs> Come on, woman, bring the stick. <laughs> he just said, No. <laughs> His employees standing there, Kyle saying, No, you don't want to go there. <laughs> I said, dude, I was just through a horrible divorce where she tried beating me up physically several times. Please. You think I'm, I said, do you realize the mothers we grew up with? Come on. <laughs> you really think I'm that scared? Well, my cousin starts laughing a little bit. He's, just don't start any crap, okay? Then I'll have to hear it. And I said, okay, now, now I'm on board. Yes. Everything that his wife said about Trump was true. Then how can you vote for him? Well, because he's an honest politician. We haven't had one of those. What do you mean? Everything you know about Trump is out on the table. He keeps exchanging women because they don't look the same as they did 20, 10 years or 20 years before. <laughs> Duh. They don't. Even Melania. <laughs> Only he's fortunate there. She looks better than she did 20 years ago. But still... The women he was married to made out all right, did they not? <sighs> nah, if it was just looks, Marla Maple should have won the whole program. That was something. But anyway, she still is. But hey, let, let's go on with that. Trump's a misogynist pig. Got it. Oh, wait a minute. That seems to be over. You know what the sad thing is? His running mate, Mike Pence, who claimed to have led Trump to Jesus Christ, Claimed that he had saving faith with Trump, which I'm still, mm, I don't know, we'll find out at Judgment Day, right? Let's see who goes up when the angel comes down and blows the trumpet, okay? <laughs> Trump, you coming? We'll find out then. But his deeds should speak to themselves, and the way he's gone through this lawsuit should speak for itself. Not necessarily his rallies, but the lawsuit says much. Why? Because if he wasn't a true believer and didn't have the money and didn't have the guts and the spiritual persuasion to push through the lies, the garbage, the made-up crap, the the whole, I mean, you got $350 million you're supposed to pay out here. Seriously? Oh, you know it's coming from the company. So the boys will pay into their 8000 and his CEO head or eight million and another nine million on top of it all, please. 
It's a mess. Why would you continue the crime? Just walk away. Walk away from New York and the whole. He knows if he doesn't, then the rest of us are in trouble. Okay? That's not just integrity. That's looking beyond, way beyond the pale. And, uh, hey, you know, if I look at this and follow the future, our nation's screwed if these are the people in charge. And this plan is to come in and they say, this is all retribution. This is going to be, so what if it is? I don't care. You see, I'm not a leftist. One guy looked at me and said, all right, all right you want almost the same things that we do, but for the wrong reasons. And I said, tell me that's a problem. He said, wait a minute. You want us on your side, but you're going to say, we want it for the wrong reason, but we want the exact same thing? Please. That's like telling me we both want that steak over there. But I want it because it's incredibly delicious. You want it because it's high protein and it's good for your body. What? I've gone it for the wrong reasons, but I'm getting this. We're both getting the same benefit. You know, that's like drinking beer and screaming less filling tastes great. But we can't get along. Please. That was the whole mockery of that. That campaign should have blown up everything in the United States at the time. And even today, it's the same thing. We don't have the right attitude. We don't have, what is it? Judgmentalism. Legalism. Horrid demonism. We can't, if we want the same thing, then, then you want it for the wrong reason. Okay, explain to me. What's my reason? What? You want it for the wrong reasons. Well, why? Well, because you come from the wrong perspective. What? I told one guy, I'd be the first one online for a solar farm. It was worth crap. What do you mean? Takes up land, takes up space, and it's a hot spot. You're worried about global warming, and you're going to have solar panels all over the hillside, taking up the sunlight from the plants underneath, the grass and other plants that they might put there. In fact, it'll probably kill them off. Now what? No sunlight, no food, no oxygen. You want to get rid of CO2 by putting the panels in? Now you've compounded the problem, you imbecile. I mean, complete imbecile. Your understanding of physics and science is so problematic that it puts you back to kindergarten. That means preschool? Come on! There's a cycle of life here that's a whole lot bigger than, I want an electric car because it's good for the environment. How is it good? Explain it. Well, it doesn't pollute. No, pre-polluted. What do you mean? During production. Before production. You think those machines digging those heavy metals out of the ground is safe? Do you think all the clothes that those guys are wearing and the special personal protective gear, PPG? Or PPE, depending on who you talk to? Huh? Seriously? How about all the tires that are wasted and torn up in those pits? Huh? Do you think that the corner of that little bitty loader that weighs in the neighborhood of 75 tons Metric tons, by the way. And each corner wheel cost between ten and twenty thousand dollars each. You think that's just a little bit of rubber from that plantation down there in Brazil, someplace? Please. Some guy told me years ago, "You're not an environmentalist at all," and I said, "Never will be." He says, "I'd call you an ecologist." What? That doesn't sound. What do you mean? So then I got to ask the question. He says, well, an environmentalist looks at get rid of tailpipe emissions. And they'll do anything to get rid of tailpipe emissions. Anything. They don't care. They want that taken care of. He says, but that's not the same to you. Tailpipe emissions sounds good. What's it going to do? You want to know everything. What's it doing to the performance? How much more fuel is it going to burn? What are we going to actually put on that car that's something extra that we have to take care of and maybe put in the dump or recycle in the junkyard? Or what's it going to do to the environment? All of this other stuff, creating this stuff to go into the car. He said, you want to know what's happening from cradle to grave. From inception on the drawing board to its production all the way around here to the final total end result. You don't care about the actual end result of tailpipe emissions down. You want to know if you're going to go for tailpipe emissions, what's happening along the way that does the same thing. It's, yeah, because everything we've done so far has been worse. 
Put a thermactyl air system on your car in the 70s and late 60s. Blows air into the exhaust. And the idea of burning the exhaust. A solution to pollution has been dilution almost the entire time. They just blew air into the exhaust. Comes out the tip. See, we took care of emissions. No, you didn't. You diluted it. Car doesn't run any different. Total feckless garbage. They got it to such a problem, they leaned the cars up too, so they weren't burning properly. So it took more fuel to run the car to produce the same power. They put propane enrichment systems on them. So when they adjusted the idle and the car sat there idling for idle, they're complaining about all these cars with their pollution defeat systems because they want to test it through their RPM ranges now. They used to do it at idle only, and the EPA was happy with that. Why? Because in the cities, they had a problem with that pollution in particular, idling too much. 95% of the rest of the country didn't have the problem because it wasn't concentrated. But everybody had to pay the price. Everybody. Why? I wanted to know why. It's their problem in the city. Fix it there. You got to have a special car for the city? That's your problem, not mine. Vote it in. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't regulate it in. We, the people, should be voting on it. And he says, you think the people are smarter than they do. And I said, yes, I do. And I said, how about my kids? Do I have a four-year degree? I said, I paid for hers. What do you think came out of that? And he said, oh, yeah. Social work degree? That was so worthless you can't even fathom it. But she had a four-year degree and could brag about it. Found out years later she may have almost slept her way through that without me knowing it. It was bad. Fortunately, it was decades later. Well, glad the old witch is gone. But seriously, everything I run into on the left, from social services to pollution to taking care of this to taxation to regulation to all of it, is nothing more than comes down to dictatorial regulations, dictates that come down through by, well, you should be used to it with your Bible and religious thumping stuff. When is the last time I thumped it on you from here? Hmm? I've got ample time. I don't waste my time. And besides that, you read the scriptures, you find out it's not Bible thumping. It's not God demands. He told his people, Israel, you're going to live this way because you're my people. If you don't want to, there's a door. Oh, you got to act this way and live this way to be an Israeli type and a, and, a, and a foreigner in there is a, yeah, you could be part of the Israeli family. The Jewish family. They'd bring you in, live like a Jew. It was that simple. You don't want to? Okay, don't. Where did they come from? It came from a regular guy that God says, you're going to be the father of my nation. I'm telling you, if you walk this way, your family's going to get it all. Cool. Was he perfect? Heck no. But the thing I'm trying to get to here is that everybody on the left is talking about Bible thumping all the way through, that you demand this and it's horrible that. And when you actually read through it, you find out that no, it's not. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Winter cough. Oh, wait, I have it year round. Thank you, Guthrie Clinic, for that screw-up. But that little Bible is an encyclopedia of 66 books that were penned by almost as many authors, different people, through thousands of years. The Ten Commandments weren't ten suggestions, but at this point in time, Jesus laid it down even harder. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. That's a pretty wild process to go through, isn't it? It takes the Ten Commandments and darn near flushes the whole thing because you're exceeding it. To be like Jesus, that's the thing. You can't do that. That's what you think Jesus came for. To live that life. To be tortured and butchered for it. Hung up on a cross and killed. Actually, no, he wasn't killed. He took his life when he was done paying for our sins. Well, that's how valuable his life was. They stuck him in a hole in the ground, actually a hole in a rock. And he and an angel opened it up. 
out he came. There's nothing anybody could do about it. They had to lie about it, and that's historical fact. 500 and some witnesses, and finally after 40 days, Jesus goes up. And he had witnesses standing there as he went up with the angels into heaven. Paid for the price. Witnesses, 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 witnesses. Meaning facts. Well, what's that got to do with the environmental? Everything. The environmental regulations are to put people down. If we put people down, we become pawns. If we become pawns, they're in control. And if they want enough people in control, then the Valley of Armageddon will have people there fighting for evil to get rid of God out of our world and to live any way we want. And he allows us to do that now. But these people can't stand anything. They think if everything they don't like is out of here, their lives will be perfect. Just get God out of here and we can force him out. Isn't that like a two-year-old telling the parents, No! And wants to run out in the street and kill himself or run across the cars or, you know, run out and pasture and get run down by a wild bull or something. They just want to do that. And you said, No, snatch. Only we're old enough to know better, still acting like two-year-old adults. We don't want God here. Well, it's evidence that he's backing off. Hmm? And when the time comes, and they talk about the Holy Spirit removing his influence from the world. The only way that happens is if we're gone. And you're not. The fact that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, was whipped, tortured, beaten, lived, what, 33 years guesstimate in the early years A.D. And there's tens of thousands, if not millions of witnesses from that time when there's barely a few million on the earth. Historian records, he was here. What that Bible claims and what we claim happened. Witnesses that he rose into heaven. No chariot this time. He just went on his own. And says, follow me. And I'll take you the same way. Well, what we call the rapture is the time when the Holy Spirit's removed from the earth. That means, bye-bye. Because the Spirit's in each one of us. And the fact that you can accept Christ as your Savior for a changed life. Receive the Holy Spirit to assist you in changing that life. To give you a new conscience. Is all there. And me putting it on here as a recording that probably will be axed by YouTube, but hopefully five or ten people will see it before then. And if you're the only ones that see it, rock on, baby. If only one or two of you comes to salvation, my life is complete, and I'll be happy enough with that. But I'm not done yet. Got a long way to go. And a few lives to take with me from that point. There's a lot of Christians I'm, you're going to find out through my life and anybody attached to me that I'm going to have disagreements with. And I will never change my positions unless there's someone who can actually come and tell me something different than, well, you have hurt feelings. Really? You know I have hurt feelings? You're a narcissist. There are so many narcissistic Christians that walk up and say, I'm a leader, I'm telling you. Oh, no. You're not a leader. You're supposed to be a representative. I have no leaders, and I will use the term loosely because it's a modern term. You're supposed to have representatives and teachers. We don't. We have leaders. If you represent me in the deacon board, we can talk. If you are my leader in the deacon board, we can't talk. It's that important. It's a distinction that the church doesn't seem to like because they fall into the same dogmatic, dictatorial positions in every church I've been in since I was a child. Well, they're church leaders. You're to, I don't look up to you. I never did. I never will. You're supposed to be my brother and sister in arms here working for the salvation of other people in the world. Pointing out Christ, not fighting over minutiae and ordering people around. 
bylaws with a constitution. Constitution you have to have on two levels. One, you got to tell people what the organization of that particular church is. Just is. The other one, the government demands it. Well, you should be ahead of the government. Tell them, we're so far ahead of you, you're still looking up. You say, well, that's arrogant to the government, unsafe people, on Christian environment. Oh, yeah. And the other one is bylaws. You don't trust the Holy Spirit to take your teaching into people's heart and change it. You don't trust yourself to lead and represent them. Yeah, I did use the word lead there. By example. You're not my leader. You're supposed to be a representative and an example. And so far, in my 63, soon to be 64 years, total failures. Except for a couple of preachers. Little George Engel, <laughs> what a fireball at 70. Manny was a hoot. Power and spirit. Oh, well, five foot two, 110 pounds. Honest. He was so honest it scared the local preachers. They still got together. He says, I think I intimidate him, which is kind of funny at my size. He says, do I intimidate you? I said, no, I'm too stubborn. I grew up in a hospital of abuse. He says, well, maybe that's why we get along. He says, I don't always like your style, but I like what you're aiming for. I left that church, and not because of him. It was because of the so-called leadership making demands. I won't tolerate demands ever since I was 20-something. I will not tolerate you walking up and ordering me how I will live, especially now. If you can't take me under your wing, show me and teach me, then you're no better than my abusive parents were. And I will take that to my grave. So that's an understanding of my person. I have to stand by my own decisions as a technician for years. And now it's, I'm retired and do a little work here and there. It's that important. And the left and the right distinction, what's that got to do with pollution? <laughs> Is people have polluted this book with their attitudes, their actions, and their misrepresentations of the words that God is putting down in here. And one of the worst, I can't even remember the idiot's name. He was a preacher in Rural Grove, New York. I'll think about it sometime later on. But his problem was, you don't read Thessalonians, you don't read Daniel, you don't read all these books, and specifically, never read Revelation, because if he didn't teach it to you, you would get the wrong message. There are half, about half a dozen books in the Bible that he said, don't read unless it's interpreted for you. That is a perversion of all things. Biblical, Christian and a horrible representation of Christ in his word. If you have the Holy Spirit within you and you're curious about Revelation, you're going to read it with trouble until it is interpreted. And if the Holy Spirit can't do that for you, you're going to have a problem. Your first reading is going to come up weird. But you say, I trust the Lord in his word. What does that mean? Then other books reveal it. And then you get other trusted people to reveal it. You don't get some arrogant, moronic jackass telling you don't read the book. Ever. Never trust anybody that tells you. Be careful. That part of the Bible, as soon as they say that, walk away. End the conversation. Read this book. And where you don't understand, you just read 66 books by what? 50 some authors? Dictated from God with different personalities laid down that God chose those people for their personalities to put this down. And then some moronic pinhead because he's called himself pastor is telling you, well, be careful what you read. What? Please. Read the book. 
But if it's the first time you're going through, you're one of those that wants to look for trouble in the Bible. You know what I'm going to tell you look for trouble? Read the genealogy. Yeah, the genealogies. Matthew and Luke. Go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Keep right on going, right on through. When you start to get to an understanding, you get to Revelation, you have something to choose from. Whether you're going to read it and find out what happens in the end, or do you have enough understanding of who Christ is to go all the way back to Genesis? And when it says, let us make man in our image and the Holy Spirit moved across the face of the earth. Do you understand that, yes, you stupid Jehovah's Witness, ignorant moron, pinheads, stay off my stoop. God is in three persons. It's right there. It's as simple as it can be. But the psychologist didn't like it, so he had to rewrite that puppy. I wonder if he was part of Reader's Digest board. Mm. Anyway, got to go now. I have to work on some things. Debbie's going to be home soon. And sometimes when I'm doing this, she's like, well, I got to go to the other room. <laughs> so, how can you say live long and prosper? <laughs> Easy. Peace and long life. To you who went this far and you're unsaved because this was in the background while you're prepping dinner or something else, I have a message for you. A specific one. Peace and long life is something specific I have been saying because I wish you peace and long life sitting here on the earth so that your mind's at ease enough that the time comes, hey, I'm not scared of that Bible. I'm going to read that thing. And the other one is long life because if you don't have a long life, you will be facing judgment soon. Without part from the Lord.